this is the LEGO Star Wars Summer 2022 Inquisitor Transport Scythe, given set number 75336. It includes 924 pieces and in the U.S. retails for $100. A hefty price tag, but may be worth that money, given that it does have four really good-looking minifigs from the new Kenobi show and a killer-looking ship here. We'll find out if it's worth the money during this review. Let me know what you think in the comments and leave a like if you enjoy the box art. Very simple with Tatooine. We got the new Kenobi Vader art on the bottom left and a light blue stripe to denote its Kenobi affiliation as well. The back of the box shows the sand dunes of Tatooine as well as highlighting a few key functions of the set and then we have the duel between a bunch of the Inquisitors and Obi-Wan there. We have the ugly white rendered instructions, numbered bags that go up to eight, and the rest of the summer 2022 sets. Let's check out our minifigs. The first minifig, and to me the least exciting one here, is Obi-Wan Kenobi. He's got a nice sand blue look for the torso and arms. Got the dark brown for the legs with no leg print, no waist print, so a pretty simple figure. Uh, he does have a special cape that doesn't really want to bend down that good. Maybe that's something that over time will fit the figure better, but right now, fresh out of the box, I think looks a little weird. Face flipped around and cloth piece removed. We can see that second facial expression, just a dull look. And the torso has some good detail and a bit of a wash skin tone at the top. Next up is Reva. And I don't know why, but the way I would describe her is she does look a little bit stoic. Maybe it's that slicked back hair. And I think it's a decently good hair piece to represent her hair in the show. She's got a solid face print, no leg print or anything. She does use the single uh, soft cape. It's a bit of a thinner cape than like the Jedi Sith capes that you might be used to. And if we pull that up, you can can see there is some solid detail for the back print. No second face though because of how uh, thin that hair piece is. You'd see that face peeking through, so not there. The lightsaber hilt, of course, is the Inquisitor style lightsaber hilt that we're going to see on all three characters, and it fits really nicely here. It looks super cool, has the double red blade, and unfortunately does not retain the feature of actually spinning around, but you can of course try to represent that by spinning it in the character's hand, I suppose, but it's just, it's not the same as what you see, I think. The fifth brother here is of course another fantastic addition to the set with a new face print that has a tinge of green to it. We got the helmet on him, which looks awesome, got that nice angle to it, and then a new armor piece for his chest there, just goes over shoulders as well. No arm printing, but an awesome torso print. He does have a back print, but it's mostly covered up by that armor, and his lightsaber can actually clip onto the back, unlike Reva, both the uh, Fifth Brother and the Grand Inquisitor coming up will have that clip piece. The final cool detail about this figure is despite the Lego helmet covering it 100% of the time when it's on, if you take it off, you actually have the detail of the back of the Fifth Brother's head from the Kenobi show. It's an awesome detail that unfortunately does get covered up because it's so good. Finally, we have the Grand Inquisitor, same clip for the lightsaber at the back, but a entirely new armor piece otherwise for him with some nice printed detail on the chest there. Very great torso, leg, waist print, just all continuous prints always look awesome. His face, I think the face on the Rebels Grand Inquisitor was just cooler and more intimidating, but that doesn't mean this one's not accurate, and it is, and I think it's good for that. It just, the, the Rebels Grand Inquisitor just has a look to him that I think is superior, but they really nail the look of the uh, lines on the back of the head there, so nice to see that print go all the way around and then he does have a cape that's a bit thinner at the top and really wide at the bottom so some very unique cape pieces in this set and despite being completely covered up most of the time he does have a bit of a back print for some added detail after building this ship i genuinely only have one question why is it so good and i'm not kidding like it's genuinely surprising to see them make a set this genuinely great and the reason i really bring that up is because in the summer of 2020 we got the knights of ren transport ship a decent looking ship from the exterior but for only thirty dollars more here in 2022 we have the inquisitor ship and it's so much larger and more importantly i think the lesson they probably learned after this set essentially flopped and everyone hated it uh, not that it doesn't look good externally but like there's no interior, no play to it, nothing, right? And this ship just blows it out of the water as far as that goes. There's actually a full interior inside of that thing. It's crazy cool versus this, which just has like a couple seats on top that you can put minifigures in and their heads stick out. You literally can't even close the hatch with the figure in there. So just off the bat in two years, they've massively improved conceptually where they are when it comes to making sets. Putting this at a hundred bucks instead of a measly $70 ship where you have to skimp out so much, really changes what you can do and that's awesome.
Externally, they seem to have knocked it out of the park with this one. They've really nailed the all black look. And one of my favorite things about it is it has the printed canopy piece there and translucent red all printed with black on top. And, you know, I would have expected a sticker maybe in years past, but because it's kind of the same canopy piece that they use for the Speed Champions cars, I think it made more sense for them to go and print it since they already have the technology. And the all black look is just fantastic. There's so many cool angles. The building techniques used are very fun. It's an engaging build. And if you do end up buying it i think you'd enjoy it by the way affiliate link in the description below for this set but realistically there's only a few small gripes anyone could even have with the exterior seeing something like this dark gray where it should probably be black right in front of the canopy piece definitely is a little bit distracting but it's not the end of the world on a set that's already very good otherwise the side on the bottom looks very good with lots of grill pieces and tiles for a little bit of extra detail and depth. And you can see the rest of the exterior is basically a nice mix of tile and plated parts. That's really what they're going for here. It's just a mix look. On the back, we actually get some stickers, which add a nice bit of detail and depth. Definitely probably needed there. The engines at the back are represented with blue thrust coming out the back, which always works and looks good. But especially on all black design, it just really pops. The other external features, of course, include spring loaded shooters on each side and underneath making use of the big ski piece we have landing gear it's stationary it doesn't retract or anything but it works fantastically and the last thing before we get to the interior we have to talk about is like how you pick up the set it's a little bit of a difficult one it feels a little bit awkward to pick up like this like i'm not the biggest fan of it it's got a lot of like sharp edges that kind of poke into you uh, the wings do kind of drop down sometimes on their own and you want them down anyway when you're in flight mode this is probably like the best way to hold it on the outside but there is this big section on the inside you can grab at so i much prefer when possible holding it underneath the ship here it's just smooth it doesn't feel like it's going to break in your hands or anything with the paneling you've got a nice solid grip so uh, yeah it's just one of those things that it can be a little bit quirky depending on who you are trying to pick this thing up but it doesn't seem to break uh, very much if ever at all on me when i'm picking it up it just feels a little awkward working our way to the interior we actually have a boarding ramp at the front here i have to do is push this down and just like that you can have your characters disembark the inquisitor transport scythe it's actually really easy to do and you can actually lift this part up to give you a little bit more space if you really need it i really do like having that extra space there because it's a little bit of a snug fit but technically the characters can fit through the hole while standing at least reva and maybe the inquisitor maybe not fifth brother his helmet is huge but uh, this does work slightly and i think it just looks really cool as a feature or function whatever i also just have to point out how satisfying it is to close this look how perfectly everything lines up with that top piece and then you bring that bottom piece back on like so it's beautiful accessing the rest of the interior can be done in a number of ways the windshield piece actually can be brought up on its own which will give you access to the front seat only and in that seat there's actually a very nice control panel and you can see it's actually kind of deep down there but on those studs we can place Reva like so and she actually can pilot the ship really easily it looks really nice and then when you close it up you can just barely kind of see her peeking through really like the way that looks and then if you want to access the rest of the interior you can just pull this whole thing up in a way and then these side panels also pull off and down which is going to give you the bulk of your access to that large space inside behind Reva there are a couple more seats as well as some control panels those are stickered so nothing crazy special there but they do add a nice bit of detail to the inside and they kind of block off what would otherwise be some pretty large gaps in the side panels here they fit really snugly there and they look very nice uh, to help create a bunch of extra detail inside and then at the back we kind of have those imperial hallway lights that we often see on things like star destroyers those add a lot there making use of the seats here is unsurprisingly a breeze they actually give you a little bit of extra space at the front so you can place the character like this because if you place the fifth brother back any further his lightsaber of course will not allow him to sit in the seat so they have to give them that extra little bit of space and of course the grand inquisitor with his cape behind him it's a soft cape so you don't have to worry about it like breaking while it's being put there it's not going to bend too badly and then you're left with like all these lightsaber blades and that's where those random studs on the ground come in you'll see six of them on the set and it's a little bit of an odd way to store lightsaber blades i'm going to be honest it might be the only time they have ever done something like that on a lego star wars setup and after filling the interior the only thing that kind of feels left over is rava's 
this lightsaber hilt. I couldn't find anywhere for it to go. She obviously doesn't have the clip on her back, so you could just drop it in, I guess. Maybe there's a spot I just missed it, but as far as I'm aware, there's nowhere really to put it. Much like with the Summer Waves ATT, the Inquisitor Scythe Transport really brings it with the interior fun. They've got a ton of space and a ton of detail that really adds a lot of character to this beautiful looking ship. For $100, this may very well be the best price set of the year for LEGO Star Wars, and in my opinion, it might be the best set hands down. It's got almost nothing wrong with it at all. It's got four amazing minifigures, one giant ship with a full interior and landing gear. Like, they really knocked it out of the park with this one. I really love everything it's got going for it, and it's something that I'm going to peg a score of 9.8 out of 10 on. It's just phenomenal. If you guys do decide you want to pick one up, I've got affiliate links down in the description below. Help support the channel. Leave a like on the review if you enjoyed. Let me know what you think about the set in the comments section below, and you can check out more 2022 LEGO Star Wars set reviews on the end screen now.